<sighs> Looks like we made it. Made it all the way through the grunt with off. Nothing but a few scratches to show. <laughs> Think you might have overdone it? I followed the instructions to the letter. Maybe it triggered a reaction with the Mako? Well, let's hope the city's still in one piece. But the plan is what matters, right? <laughs> I mean, this must have helped some. After all that, it had better have. It sure anyway, seems pretty helpful, what with all the earthquakes. <laughs> Don't just down there. All right, then. Lead the way. You Wait, got it. Was Wedge's whole job to know where Sector 8 is? <laughs> it's, it's He's part so of it. excited. Watch out for live wires. They're everywhere. I mean, to be honest, I love Wedge. Wedge is very good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when he showed up at the Battle of Exelon, like, everybody loves Wedge. <laughs> Man, what is that? I've never smelled anything so foul. Oh, it's me. Gotta do something about that. And soon. So yeah, obviously Big's Wedge pilots from Star Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just Final Fantasy VII, though. There's a tradition of lots of Final Fantasies having characters named Biggs and Wedge. Oh, okay. I felt that one in my guts. They just keep on coming. We need to get out of this place. Was it the Mako density? The primary explosive? The blasting agent? Hey, the false the flag. Whoa. Oh, man. Uh, I'm running on empty here. You can refuel at the base. Next time, I'll have to bring a little pick-me-up. Cloud, open your eyes. <laughs> Come on. Also, Wedge is a robot. How much farther do we have to go? Not far. His robo-senses told him so. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's connected to a GPS. There's a little antenna poking out of his head. That's about as good a place as any. Stand back, then. I'll set the bomb. Can't wait to see you, Marlene. Can't wait to take a hot shower. And yeah, you were correct. Bear is absolutely a dad. <laughs> it's got it's got some heavy dad vibes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fire in the I also like that when everyone else is covering their ears for the bomb, Bear is just sitting there with his wide, arms wide open like, yeah! <laughs> I love bombs. Can't get enough bomb. Attention all citizens. Attention all citizens. This is an alert from the Shinra Emergency Operations Center. Unidentified intruders have detonated a bomb inside Mako Reactor 1. Multiple explosions have been confirmed, as well as ongoing fires. In response, a disaster warning has been issued in sectors 1 and 8. Structures in the area are at high risk of collapse, rendering the entire sector hazardous. Therefore, all residents of sector 8... No. No way. This couldn't have been us, could it? Who else what do you think put a bomb in, like... <laughs> What's done is done. <laughs> Merck's right. I can understand a little bit of disbelief, especially because we saw what really went down when they weren't looking, but like, yeah. come on, come on. And the planet won't be safe till we get the rest. Yeah, we always knew this was going to get messy. But at the same time, the very quick go like, well, that's acceptable. <laughs> yeah. Y'all got to look at the bigger picture here. Nothing worth fighting for was ever won without sacrifice. Though you may not be crying out, I know you're in pain, just like the planet. But it's okay, cause I'm here for you, to help take the load off your shoulders. Your fears, your worries, your concerns, and yes, your fees. I'm everybody's dad. <laughs> Whatever your problem, I got you. King of the dads. <laughs> So, what's our next move, boss? What's our next move, daddy? I mean, That's boss. Bedtime stories. Yay! We get our asses home! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you put on your PJs and brush your teeth. Uh, I want to see all of these members of Avalanche, like, all getting tucked into one giant bed. 
<laughs> All wearing little nightcaps. Mm -hmm. Wedge has a teddy bear that's just him. No. He has a wedgie bear. Barrett kisses each one of them in the forehead. <laughs> we'll split up and shoot for the last train home. Regroup in the freight car. Got it? Later then. Hey. I'd like my money now. You can have it once we're back at base. I mean, the ATMs just exploded. A, a building <laughs> fell on the one I usually go to. Yeah. Gonna have to go to Sector 2. <laughs> That's a long walk. You know. I don't need to tell you what this is, right? Yeah, we're getting married now. Of course not. It's healing material. You can have it for saving my life. Just doing my job, nothing more. Yeah, yeah. Fact is, I'm lucky you were there. Why don't you rub it on that ankle or whatever? Yeah. Survival can be a matter of luck or skill. And you can't rely on luck. Words to live by. Uh, yeah, well, thanks. You do know how to use it, right? You do know what I was, right? Let's tell the audience. <laughs> I don't know, it's been at least three minutes since he's yeah. mentioned it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, now we actually have access to clouds of materia and equipment. So for equipment, you always have a weapon, some type of armor, and then a accessory if you've got any. Um, armor is never like breastplates or anything. It's just wrist wear. It's always bangles. <laughs> um, yeah, Cloud's got this Buster Sword. It's got 22 attack, 22 magic attack. Doesn't increase defense or anything. It's a very well-rounded sword. I mean, yeah, it's inherited hopes. Uh, that's good, right? Yeah. But there's, there's more to the weapons that we'll get to in a later video. And yeah, bangle, 10 for both defense and magic defense. Um, but... Below our equipment, we have this materia section. Uh, uh, so both both weapons and armor can have slots to put magic orbs in. <laughs> These orbs both alter your stats a little bit and give you access to different abilities. So right here, we have this green magic materia, and it gives Cloud the fire spell. If we pull it out of his sword, he doesn't have the fire spell anymore. And you can never permanently learn abilities from materia. Your, a lot of your loadout is determined by whatever... You, Material you currently have equipped. Mm -hmm. Like stat wise, both of these materia just increase his maximum uh, MP by one point each. Later on, materia increase your stats by more. So uh, even though every party member in this game kind of has like a defined role, you can alter it more by what materia they have. So even a physical fighter can get pushed more to be like a magic user if you need a magic user at the time. Mm hmm. So yeah, now we both have a fire and cure spells that we can access because we have those orbs slotted into his sword. Okay. Now I Cloud is a dad. Oh, before I forget, here's a little something extra for being so brave. That really was the ride of a lifetime. Well, see you on the train. And yeah, those items she gives you there is for because you pick 20 minutes for the bomb timer. Ah. Yeah, also, the uh, the materia that we put into Cloud's sword, you can visibly see it when we, we turn around. The slots on weapons in this game are visible. You can see both green materia in there now. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Hey, kids. We're not going to die, are we? That's a heavy question, kids. One day, kid. One day. <laughs> I'm off. Bye. The NPCs in this game have a fuckload of dialogue. It is insane how much dialogue they wrote for like every single NPC in this game. What if the trains have stopped? Sometimes I might sit by somebody for a while because I'm waiting for them to say a specific thing. <laughs> Are there any trains going to the slums? Yeah, I wanted this kid to mention wondering if there's any trains going to the slums. Most of the time they say the thing I want right away, but... Well, kid, they're probably not, and that's part of why there's slums in the first place. You see, <laughs> yeah. you gotta get involved in your local <laughs> community. Supposed to do? This guy also brings up something, if you stand around him for a while, too, uh, that is uh, something I want brought up, because it's the earliest mention of a, a thing that doesn't otherwise come up for a little bit. Is it what it's like to be in the Broadway cast of Newsies? <laughs> 
Come on, buddy. It's just a dream. Just a bad dream. Not that one either, bud. <laughs> no, no, that, that's in response to what I said. <laughs> you don't think this was Wu Tai, do you? There you go. Sometimes mm. people will start talking about Wu Tai. Don't really know what that is yet, but a lot of people are worried about it. Well, they don't talk about it much because they're trying to protect the Wu Tai secret. It's a very precious secret. I know it's scary, but we'll be okay. So this game is an open world, but there are some areas that are a little more open. You get to visit some towns and do side quests and all of that. But all the areas you do visit are ridiculously detailed. There's tons of stuff you could very easily miss in a first playthrough. Aside from the conversations, you know, it might you might not even notice that, hey, the firefighters here are just <laughs> the soldiers you've been fighting. They're wearing the same damn helmets. They just have slightly different colors on their uniform. <laughs> and back to the NPC chatter. By the way, there's 50 gil in here. Gil is just what they call money in this world. The NPC chatter in this game is different from other open world games where they have to write a lot of dialogue that is kind of generic and can be used anywhere. Every NPC is written to say things specifically for the moment in time they are in, the place they are in. Right, So even right. if you revisit a place that you were at earlier, they'll have completely new things to say. There's a reason. Oh yeah? Like what? I don't know. Another cool thing with the NPC chatter is that uh, if you're really paying attention to it, you can glean some plot events before they even happen, mm -hmm. or there's, there's extra foreshadowing, some other cool details hidden throughout these. You can hang out in the hippie van, I guess. Mm -hmm. We're all going to die! <laughs> Don't worry, Shimmer will save us. They'll make everything better again. Just, just like a, a two NPCs that immediately tell you like how people feel about the electric company. <laughs> My daughter and her husband should be here soon. Oh, did you have uh, reservations at Mrs. Arcade? Oh, I love Mrs. Arcade. Hey, uh, is there a Mr. Arcade I should know about? Mm -hmm. uh? That's one sector over. Okay. <laughs> I'll go hang out with my friends Dave and Buster. <laughs> and some NPCs just like, they don't always talk when you're near them, but uh, these three, if they did talk, are, were all, uh, they're all buds hanging out who were coming home from work who are just scared shitless. Hell is this bombing shit? I love that everyone we've seen up to this point is some like gringy, cyberpunk badass and like now now everybody's just dressed yeah. like it's somewhere between the year 2000 and 1970 yeah right. uh the, i fucking adore the look of seven even the original game was basically like this cloud up here look up i said look up careful up here this could collapse at any moment if you want up you'll have to use those stairs or honestly, it reminds me of Fallout with their retro future, except actually making it futuristic instead of yeah. everybody's in poodle skirts. Like, not everybody's in, like, futuristic things clearly inspired by that look. Totally. Like, and they, but they still got, like, the old-timey cars and yeah. shit. Or, or old-timey lines on clearly futuristic okay. cars. You're safe now. Yeah. Got a patient with me. Has trouble walking. Need a stretcher. ASAP. We'll get you to a doctor soon. Hang in there. Help has to be on the way. Shimmer wouldn't just leave us to die, would they? No, they'd never do that. And it's the thing, too, where it's like... It, if this were a different game, the, the contrast between some of the protagonists and the normal people would be just like, what the fuck? These are two different <laughs> games, but here it works for some reason for me. I bet some of these people are thinking, are looking at Cloud and thinking, what the fuck is with this dude? I mean, yeah. Goddamn rubble. The station's right over there. But yeah, whenever there's lots of NPCs, we'll be walking around listening to a lot of them because they have a lot of completely unique things to say. But uh, yeah, you're going to notice now that we're actually out in the city of Midgar that 
the Shinra logo is on fucking everything. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is, their logo is on it. Who left grenades here? Mm. It's a good thing they didn't blow. Mrs. Arcade has seen better days. Yeah, I hope they pull Why? through. Why? They're the best sit-down dining arcade experience. <laughs> Every table's a cocktail table. <laughs> Our specials today are a, a shrimp confit and Ms. Pac-Man. Ooh. Oh man, the meals are what themed to what cocktail table you're sitting at. <laughs> hey, can you hear me? If you can, give us a sign. Got someone in need of medical attention. Send a stretcher. You can still walk? If the people at Miss Arcade were really smart, what they would do is make all the cocktail tables main machines so they could swap out the games with the menus whenever. <laughs> I hope they don't go too literal with the menus though, because Metal Slug could be really bad. Do not sit at the Rampage table, you will be served human meat. <laughs> also, one of the other things I really like about these, the, the look of Midgar is um, massive fucking pipes mm -hmm. everywhere. We start looking ahead here. That's a big fucking pipe. What does it do? <laughs> and they're just jammed right up against the fucking buildings. Stations intact. I believe in a revolutionary insurgent group that uses public transit. <laughs> Hell yeah. A cloud. It's from the spring collection. You wondering how I got my hair this nice? <laughs> it's not enough tonic in the world for you. An ex-soldier <laughs> first class. Oh look, it's the man of your dreams. Oh. Sorry, I have to get going. I have to go to the store. How? Missing a few things. I just moved to a new apartment. He couldn't be. But then... I had no idea Lance Bass was in the game. <laughs> yes, this character, who appeared in, as a secret boss by Kingdom Hearts 1, was voiced by Lance Bass. <laughs> and it made everyone on Game Facts in 2001 very fucking mad. Really? It was hilarious. People were so mad! <laughs> a guy from NSYNC voicing one of their, their favorite anime characters? Oh, that made them mad. The yeah. first two voice one of their favorite. Yeah. Yeah. None of the stuff where he would be voiced had been made yet. Kingdom Hearts was the first thing, actually. Nothing bad can happen to us. We have Jesse's green ball of health. Hmm. The healthiest orb I've got. <laughs> I mean, you can also cast fire spells, but I think we're covered right now. You're not real. You're... Dead. Hell yeah, baby. I am. Um, I killed you with my own. <gasps> oh, you need not remind me. I'm super fucking dead. It was the crowning moment <laughs> of our time together. But that was then, and this is now. I have a favor to ask. Our beloved planet is dying. I'm getting a get together party Slowly. for my new apartment. As you can see, there's still some cleaning up to do. What was all the fire? Can you bear to see the planet suffer? You want to come? Cloud. Mom. Were the planet to die, 
So many things would be lost. Your hometown burned so bright. The sound of her voice pleading for me to spare you. The shiver of her flesh yielding to cold steel. More like Lance Badass. <laughs> that which binds us together would be no more, and I would be loath to live in such a world. Which is why I must ask you this one favor. Don't worry. It's a simple thing. Can you watch my cat? Run, Cloud. He eats special Run food. Away. You have to leave. You have to live. You bastard! Yeah! Good, Cloud. Very good. Hold on to that hatred. By the way, my apartment's in Sector 7. <laughs> if you want to come by... Take the orange line, Cloud. <laughs> I'm seeing things. Fumes from all the Mako, maybe. All right. You got this. So yeah, speaking of voice actors, the remake completely recast everybody. Mm -hmm. The people who voice Cloud and Sephiroth there in the past, no, ditched all of them. Got completely new people. But I do like the new people a lot, actually. What's going on? Who you Whoever did this is gonna pay. This place got hit too? I'm and from now on, we know anytime there's a video over an hour long, it's because Sephiroth talks in that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything was fine then. Well, he talks about the way. same rate as Skullface does, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> just just about slightly different stuff. Easy to miss detail, but I like there's lots of people in their apartments just looking out their windows going like, what the fuck? <laughs> Hold on to your hatred, big boss. <laughs> right? <laughs> there's going to be some other Metal Gear parallels here, just... You know, they're just tropes. It's not specifically Metal Gear or anything, but uh, they're things I liked about Metal Gear. Shooting for the station? Take the alley and climb up to the roof of that building at the end, and you're practically there. If you make it that far. So this music track that's playing right now was not a part of the original game soundtrack and is actually a song taken from the sequel movie Advent Children. Oh. Yeah. There's a ton of actually just completely brand new music tracks here, but they also borrow stuff from other Final Fantasy VII related things too when it's appropriate. Shinra will save us. I know it. Mm. Good luck with that kid. <laughs> I gotta get on the train. Bye. Emergency operations center. An evacuation order has been issued to the occupants of buildings in the vicinity of the Sector 8 Expressway. I'm so glad that Sephiroth showed up with a voice that we can make fun of. Oh, I love it. <laughs> the previous Sephiroth was also really good, but he was really fucking deep. <laughs> like a level of deep that I cannot hit. He's just so chill. Yeah. Y'all want a Beaufort? <laughs> the, the most reliable car around. Many homes are at risk. It is not safe to remain indoors. Please leave your residences at once. I repeat. Like I said in the previous episode, we're not going to be doing a, a ton of compare and contrast because I just want to like focus on this game. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the Let's Play, I'll do a little playthrough of the part this game adapts, which, funny thing, this game is roughly 35 to 40 hours, depending on how much you want to do. Sure, sure. The part of the game is adapting is about six hours. <laughs> and somehow it's not super padded out. They just added new stuff, and also just the fact that things that were originally just text boxes and Lego people being fully voice acted, fully motion acted, all that, that adds a lot of time to everything. Stay together. Yeah, together. I don't want to leave without you. Me too. I'm staying. 
At the end of Let's Play, I'll play through that five to six hour chunk of the game just so that everybody can see after seeing this whole remake mm -hmm. what the original was like because um, a big difference here is you do run through like this part of Midgar to get to the train but in the original there's so few NPCs and you go th get to the train so quickly that you don't really see the public's reaction to the bombing at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. So, so it doesn't have that family on the roof that's living through episode six of their own anime? <laughs> yeah, okay. No. No. <laughs> We're going to do this together, Mom. What didn't collapse? This area here is a really good example of the way the remake expands upon the citizenry of Midgar. Is They put a lot of care in writing NPCs according to where it is that they live in the world. So here, we're going to see the wealthier people who are like, shocked. Their, their safety bubble has been popped. The mayor can kiss his job goodbye. Y'all think your neighborhood is so safe and there's a place just selling mines down down the street? <laughs> it's uh it's it's for Someone hobbyists. Please tell me what's going on. Yeah, you'll start hearing some people start talking about the mayor of Midgar. The mayor's a lousy bum. Yeah, he's a lousy bum as far as I can tell. <laughs> this was really easy to miss, and I missed it on my first playthrough of this game, but man, there is a shiny purple orb on the ground right by that van. Don't let the intruder escape. Oh. Oh, but you've got orbs. The fire won't spread this far, will it? So this is Loveless Street. Uh, we saw this place in the intro to the game, the alley where that flower girl was in. That was this place. It's kind of like the shopping district, I think. They've got fashion, baby. Yeah, fashion along with their minds. They better catch the bastards who did this. Please, it is my responsibility to keep you safe and escort you to the shelter. We'll wait for the military. Yes, they will have been trained for this sort of thing. This street was recreated one this or two other times for the spin-off Final Fantasy VII games, but man, they did a way better job with it this time around. You never really get to actually look much at Loveless Street in the original Final Fantasy 7. Mm -hmm. You just kind of coast through it in about the course of 10 seconds. <laughs> the real target was people like us here on the plate. What? Those filthy slum rats are jealous of everything we have. You think so? I mean, obviously. <laughs> Could the mayor be behind this? Huh? Maybe it's part of a plot to tarnish President Shinra's name. Okay. Stupid government getting in the way, my corporate overlords. Ooh, they have Andui. Yeah. I want some of that. It's funny that there's like, they, they have real cuts of meat there, but later on they will name like ingredients for food and they're completely made up fantasy names. <laughs> <laughs> like there's pizzas in this world, but they're fantasy leave, pizzas. Just to be safe. My fantasy has always been pizzas. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, same, honestly. That's why it's Final Fantasy. You just get a... You finally get the pizza you've been dreaming of your whole life. <laughs> oh, hey, it's me again. Didn't know you were going this way. I forgot to mention the eye drops for my cat. You are too weak to save anyone. Not even yourself. Are you okay? Hey, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just allergic. Just a thought of cats. Oh, it flares right up. Here, this is for you. Huh? A flower? That's right. It's a gift. You know, for scaring those things away. What things? Never mind. Think of it as a memento. Just my luck. Fucking Luna love good ass. <laughs> I heard that, you know. Okay, so there are some dialogue options in this game. <laughs> There's no, like, branching story stuff. It's not like a Fallout or a Mass Effect or anything, but a lot of the dialogue choices do affect something. They kind of, It's kind of like a point system that adds up, mm -hmm. and the dialogue choices that been making through the game can make different events happen later. Right. Which one do you want to see in a swimsuit on, on disc three? Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Cloud's going to be a nice boy and, and say how much. 
She said it's a gift. Neither of these are good choices. <laughs> How much? Well, that depends on the customer. Y'all want a Buford? <laughs> it's on the house. Huh? Lovers used to give these when they were reunited. Look, I already had one girl aggressively come on to me today. I can't. Two is too much. Look, I'm involved in things. Maybe that's just Dangerous set off his things. whole, like, you know, oh, calibration. Sure you so? <laughs> if she's not being, like, aggressively so direct, he doesn't get it. Wait, you think someone's out to get you? Is that what you're all worked up about? Yeah, he keeps yes. trying to get me to come to his no fucking apartment warming thing, which I didn't even know people did for apartments, and he's got a... Hey, the reactor just blew. You shouldn't be out here trying to sell... <laughs> Oh shit, she's haunted. <laughs> she's fucking haunted. In a more literal sense than most people. What are they? Dementors. It's... <laughs> Drop your weapon! Are you blind? You know, you're right. W wait! Nice meeting you! <laughs> you go get shot while I get my soul sucked out. Maybe we'll meet tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. We got lots of stuff on our schedules already. I don't want to keep you from this apartment warming thing either. <laughs> yeah. It seemed important. No holding back. Enough. Also, if you hit guys just right, sometimes it just shoots straight up into the fucking air. Oh, hell yeah. It's great. I love it. Nothing I love the ragdolls and the Shinra soldiers. So we try to go check out where that lady went. Mm -hmm. She's just gone, but... That bastard couldn't have gotten far! Stay alert! I don't want to stick around here. I spotted a mini-boss on the other side of this fence. <laughs> Scan him for tactical advantage. There's a high potion in here. Uh, high potions just heal double the amount of potion wood, so mm -hmm. it heals 700 uh, HP. Ooh. I almost said health pee. Mm -hmm. That's what it stands for. <laughs> There's health pee, magic pee. Yeah. Too bad this isn't one of those RPGs that has power pee. <laughs> Not like Pokemon does. I like a lot of the signage in this town because it's just kind of vague. Yeah. Music, love, and peace. I mean, I'm for all of those things. Yeah. This velvet voix. Cheap prices with the best food around. Cool. Yeah. Also, I love this building. I love the architecture of this part of Big Art. It looks mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, we could just go straight on ahead and run away from the soldiers, but uh, there was an area right over here. We spotted a purple orb. There was an orb. If, if you ever spot an orb, don't don't leave without getting it. Orbs are great. We well, just walked past the orb. <laughs> I got you can't pick it up while you're fighting. Here we go. Gotcha. No escape. Going in. Just annihilate that dog. I still don't think we should be setting dogs on fire. <laughs> to be fair, these mutant dogs look like they might be in a lot of pain at all times. Just love all the pipes. Mm -hmm. Just like, literally, like that person right there. If they open their window, they can't see shit because there's a giant fucking pipe right in front of it. <laughs> Probably the one person who's not a fan of the power company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. There's other materia you can find of different colors. Different colors means they do different things. Purple orb. Um, a plorb. A plorb. The plorbs uh, generally give you some type of passive bonus or some like passive, uh, like additional ability to your move set that doesn't require like ATB to use. Uh, this is just an HP up materia, so 
you, you stick it in your sword. Now we have 10% extra uh, max HP. Hey. Um, and you can see it can go up to max HP boost of 50%, because now that we're in chapter two of the game, uh, now you start earning on top of experience points and money, start earning AP or ability points. Yeah, which, ability uh, P. Ability P. Uh, and you use those to uh, any equipped materia gain ability P. Once they level up, they either get better at whatever they do or they gain new abilities. So the fire and healing materia, it can level up two more times. So right now we just have the fire spell. We could get Fyra and Fyraga, which are the, the names for their higher tier of spells throughout the franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, same with uh, the healing materia. There's Kira and Kiraga, more powerful healing spells, as well as a regen spell, which does a different type of healing thing. So yeah, we're, we'll stick the HP materia on for a bit because it, it takes a lot of AP to level that thing up. So the longer we have it equipped. And it's weird for you to be wearing the one girl's flower and the other girl's green health ball. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh... Even like, look at this, pipes on pipes. They <laughs> built one pipe and went, fuck, we need another one. They just built it around it. Also, uh, this giant poster here for the, the play Loveless. Mm -hmm. Also in the original, although they took out some text from the original where it literally says, though hard to read, My Bloody Valentine. Loveless was just an album <laughs> of My Bloody Valentine's. <laughs> There's several other music references throughout the original game. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll probably keep in the remakes. And they all bring love and peace. Yeah, yeah music, love and peace. Oh, purple orb, plorb, plorb. So on top of these security officers from Shinra that we've been fighting, there's a new type of officer here. It's just a guy with a grenade launcher. He's pretty weak, mm -hmm. but he will he can interrupt your attacks if he hits you with grenades, and he likes to stay far away so he can just pelt you with that while other dudes are attacking you. Ah. But a fun thing I like to do with these guys is Cloud's spin attack is strong enough to take these guys out, and when you hit them with it and they die, it makes them go... They go flying. <laughs> was never in doubt. So we've got that other plorb over here. And like I was saying earlier, not all plorbs are just about boosting a specific stat. Some of them actually give you new moves or passive abilities. Like here, the deadly dodge materia that we picked up gives you a new basic attack to use. Specifically, when you're in your dodge animation, if you press attack, you'll bust out this deadly dodge move. It, this works differently based on which party member is using it. They all have their own unique deadly dodge. Mm -hmm. It's easy to forget about this materia, especially <laughs> later in the game when you have so many other cooler sounding ones to use, but this has its uses even later on in the game. But with Cloud, when you have Deadly Dodge equipped, you dodge, you attack, you bust out this wide spinning attack that can hit lots of enemies, right. and you can chain it into the rest of his normal combo. It's pretty nice, honestly. I like to use it. Also, just because you use an ATB ability does not mean it's guaranteed to hit. Like, if it's, the enemy moves out of the way, you're gonna miss. Yeah, yeah. Get ready. So yeah, the enemies work the, the same way as your party members do in that they have normal attacks and abilities that they have to spend ATB on. You just can't see their meter. Mm -hmm. that it? Yeah, that dog tried to use uh, a move called Throat Clamp on me, which is another, like, grab move where if you get hit by it, the dog just fucking chews on your face for five seconds. Uh, uh. We also picked up an accessory. It's a really basic thing. They're just wrist guards. They boost your attack by two. Oh, that's or rather nice. by five by 5% of whatever your base strength stat is. Right, right. So it's still useful later down the line, but yeah, later accessories have more unique effects. And once you get a good amount of accessories, you can make some really cool uh, builds that kind of, all of your equipment kind of have effects that feed into each other. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the reasons why I really liked even the original Final Fantasy VII's uh, combat and, and RPG stuff is just that uh, you can make cool builds and it wasn't just so much like oh I can choose from two different builds magic or attack the the ability system is so granular in that you're putting in one materia for one ability yeah, you yeah, could get yeah. really nitty gritty with how everyone one is set up once you have a lot of the uh, materia 
Just give it up! Don't run! Take up! Also, these dudes, there's jeeps that park in, they fucking blow up the fountain. Oh man. The fountain, the fountain never got blown up in the original game. Damn it. <laughs> Once you first start using Cloud's parry ability, at the very beginning of the game, it feels like, wow, this is just the win button. Nobody can touch me. <laughs> uh, but right around now is when you start realizing the parry isn't always the greatest thing to use because you get a big mix of long range and physical attackers at once. Right. So yeah. you'll be sitting there waiting to parry while guys are peppering you with full damage from their guns or magic or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do this. These guys, though, parry them all the time. I love it. And also, I mentioned, you know, your limit break gauge fills from taking damage and staggering guys. We staggered both of them at the same time, filled up half of our gauge all at once. Oh, yes. Going in. Don't let him escape! Give up! So his limit break is called Cross Slash. Uh, in the original game, it was his second limit break. Uh, his his first limit break he had in the original game was Braver, but that, now that's just a normal attack he can use whenever, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Throw that dude. And this is when Cloud learned to, to throw things by hitting them, uh, which really helped him when he joined the Smash Brothers cast. <laughs> yeah! But the rooftops look clear. It's a shame, uh, you know, Cloud is really fun in Smash, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, whenever a character gets added, a bunch of music from their games also get added, including remixes. Uh, Square Enix has some weird licensing stuff going on with their music, and they're very stingy using mm -hmm. music mm -hmm. elsewhere outside of their own stuff. So Cloud only has two songs from his game in Smash, and they're just the original songs. They're not even remakes. It's a bit of a bummer. It's okay. He still gets to fight Waluigi. Wait. <laughs> Wait a minute. God damn it. Uh, damn it. Over there. Open fire. Shoot to kill. You're out of time. Close call. Be advised. Target approaching residential area. Seal hall action immediately. Maybe you shouldn't be firing rockets Target at the residential sight. area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that uh, they don't give a fuck at all. Yeah. How dare this man force me to shoot rockets into the windows of loving, caring families. <laughs> uh, so he picked up a new piece of armor. Uh, it's a uh, iron bangle. Again, just wrist wear. That's all the armor ever is. Um, slightly better defense and all that, but the... But it's got a slot. It's got a fucking slot, man. You always want more materia slots. It's you want more materia, man. Magic orbs are fucking cool. So we're gonna slot our fire back in there so we have magic again. Especially since basically everything in this area is weak to fire. Mm. Like like how uh robots weak to lightning. Human beings and animals usually don't like being set on fire. <laughs> That's game design right there. That's intuitive intuitive design. <laughs> Another new enemy type here. Using force! Shinra soldiers with stun batons and riot shields. Mm -hmm. So if you try to attack them head on, your sword bounces off. It barely does any damage. Even if you hit them with like Braver or something, it will reduce the amount of damage they take because they're basically always blocking from the front. So you either need to run around and hit them from behind or just set them on fire. <laughs> that, that'll do, yeah. Shields cannot block magic at all. <laughs> I mean, after it's all the time down. doing so many Metal Gears, it's good to have a nice apolitical game <laughs> where uh, you got a bunch of eco-terrorists fighting against a, a private energy company that has its own riot troopers. <laughs> right? Th this Let's is go. also one of the reasons why, why Seven is still my favorite. And even before I realized it was like, yeah, this is still my favorite. I selected lads because even among JRPGs, this is a pretty unique setting and, and mm -hmm. plot setup. I'm just saying, democratize Shinra, okay? Is that so hard? Oh look, another ad for it's Stamp. Stamp. Yay. It's fucking Stamp. Stamp stands up for his friends, by the way, <laughs> and it's everyone's favorite series. 
Shinra print stamp does. <laughs> Stamp is absolutely Shinra propaganda. Yeah. yeah. Stamp is just JRPG Paw Patrol, basically. Also, just looking around the city more, uh, it's funny looking at some of the... Oh, hey, there's a dispensary. Oh, yeah, that's totally yeah. what that is. Everything in this game kind of looks like is from the 50s to 70s-ish, but then on top of that, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. places that are named like Deli Kitchen Smile, which is like a naming convention you would find in Japan for a deli. And then on top of all of that, you look around just a little bit more, and then you see telephone booths that are like the British style of telephone booths. Man, just keep your sword out, Cloud. Stop putting it on your back. It looks really tiring. This whole fight is happening because Cloud is trying to figure out Okay, the flower was free, but am I still expected to tip? Like, <laughs> yeah. Wait, come back! Wait. <laughs> come back! I want to know if I'm being a jerk or not. Come on. I mean, Cloud is a freelancer who cares a lot about getting paid himself, so maybe he, maybe he likes to tip others. Maybe he he cares about people being compensated fairly. <laughs> Also, something I did just a second ago. There was a, a grenade dude all the way up on that railing. Um, I took him out from long range because the uh, the fire spell is a homing spell. Ah. So fire spells will they will arc to hit their target. They will arc very hard to hit their target attack. Also, stamp graffiti. Ooh. Hmm. And who's that lady? Uh, stamp's owner, I think. Yeah, well, the fire spell will home in on enemies. Not all magic does that, and it's actually something you have to consider when casting spells in this game, is do I want to mm -hmm. fire this one or this one off because this one might home, but it might get destroyed if it hits a wall or if the enemy takes cover behind something. Uh, and other spells, they, they just spawn right on top of dudes. They will just right above their heads. See ya. I hope at some point in this series of games that is one game, yeah. we get a real stamp cartoon. Oh my god, yeah. Or, or I want to read stamp book one. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Very sanitized stories of stamp stopping eco-terrorists from destroying the reactors. Also, there's a lot of abilities in this game, like Braver, that even though they're like technically single target attacks, if you got enemies clumped up together, they will all get hit by it. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Well, with the sword that big, I mean. It's fucking big. It stands to reason. Also, something that was pretty refreshing, like suddenly this thing I liked from when I was a kid is like the talk of the town again on the internet. It's really nice being 20 years in the future where everyone just accepts that swords are big and you don't have to go like, that sword's way too big. <laughs> like, no, sh the sword's big and it's cool. Shut up. Who cares? Thank you, Monster Hunter, for putting that to bed. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Big everything. This is a tiny sword, really. It's not even weapons in Monster Hunter are the big. The fucking meals are big, man. <laughs> This part was super satisfying when I played through it for the first time, just because we've been using a, a new arrangement of the original game's battle theme up until now, but here, a faithful rendition of the original kicks in, and ah, oh, it kicks ass. So, Cloud had an awkward interaction with a girl who ran off, and he's wearing a flower she brought pinned to his chest. Is this prom? Is this Cloud's prom night? <laughs> it might be. I think Cloud would be very awkward at prom. Also, there was a use of the grenade. They they always do 200 points of splash damage. They're very weak later on in the game, but at the start, they're good for tossing soldiers around at least. Brace yourself. And again, Kind of hard to be in Punisher mode. Lots of gunfire, while there's also two shield guides you want to parry. Mm -hmm. You want to try to dodge the stun baton ability they have, because uh, you can parry it, but they will attack through it, and if you get hit by multiple hits of the stun baton, you will get stunned.
And hey, this is the guy we saw earlier with the red shield uh, that was on the other side of the gate when we tried looking for the flower girl. The Huntsman. I don't think I would like to live in a place where one of the cops is called The Huntsman. Look, they're following the law. They're clearly announcing when they're going to use force as they try to murder you in the street. Ah, ASAP. All right. So The Huntsman is a mini boss. He has more abilities than the normal shield guys do. Like, he's got that riot shield ability. Um, again, he's a human, weak to fire. It will pressure him when you uh, hit him with fire. That's your chance to hit him with uh, moves that increase his stagger, of course. So, like, this fight can go on forever if you're just hitting square a lot. Yeah. But use your abilities wisely, hit him with fire, stagger him, queue up two moves in a row. You can take him out super fast. No, he killed the Huntsman. Which, which Hemsworth was that? I can't even remember. <laughs> Wait, I know that. Sorry, I missed that last word. What was that? Now maybe people will finally believe me when I say I'm an ex-soldier. <laughs> I killed about a hundred cops today, and I just flipped onto a train. You don't get much more ex-soldier than that. Guess Cloud won't be joining us after all. No need to assume the worst. I'm sure he's fine. You saw him in action, didn't you? No, he was hanging out by the elevator. Goddamn one-man army. You think he's a keeper? I love you, Wedge. Oh, you had me worried for a minute. Huh? Huh? Uh, what the hell you been up to, huh? <laughs> Giving public security the runaround. That's what. I had an awkward interaction with the girl, also. <laughs> Nicely done. Well, can't argue with results, huh? Anyway, I need what? this uh, money so I can buy special cat medicine. <laughs> the beautiful man didn't leave enough behind in the cabinet. Wait. Yeah. Got a question for you all. What? Ever been attacked by an invisible enemy? Uh, what? Uh, wearing robes. Came and went like the wind. <laughs> Thought they were invisible. They were, at first. Only saw them after she grabbed me. A new Shinra weapon, maybe? <laughs> More like a panic-induced hallucination. <clears throat> Never mind. Forget I said anything. Suit yourself. Come on, let's move up. I guess the five person minimum to get a car with seating. <laughs> we all know the rules. A lot of people here. And in the freight car, too. Because of the evacuation order, maybe? This Lucky us. We've got a crowd to hide here. Head for the front of the train and hold there. Due to an explosion at Mako Reactor 1, an emergency schedule is now in effect. Your understanding and cooperation is appreciated. Also, always look behind you in this game. There's always treasure. <laughs> These assholes right for shitting on the slums. It's fucking hundred bucks in there. Hey dude, you wanna get out of the slums? Try opening these boxes. Just let me get home. Find any Phoenix Down in there, I bet you could sell it. Oh yeah, Phoenix Down's are pricey. Hell yeah. He'd at least get 150 bucks for that. They catch you did this? Wow, who did think there'd be people riding in the freight car? I guess they don't have much choice, but rather them than me. Okay, we gotta talk about like thinking to yourself and things you say, okay? Yeah. Ma'am? Just wanted to be alone. Ma'am? Also, there's some uh, a detail in this upcoming car that's really easy to miss. On the left side of the train, you're going to see a girl in striped stockings stand up. Uh, she was sitting next to this dude who's asleep, and now she's sitting next to another dude who's getting kind of sleepy. Uh, if you listen to people in the car, they get kind of worried that their stuff has been stolen. Because this girl is a fucking pickpocket. <laughs> 
And like, if you go next to her, uh -oh. <sighs> okay. She says shit like, "I'm trying to work here," because she's just fucking waiting for people to fall asleep to nick their shit. But it's a very easy thing to miss this girl <laughs> and what she's doing. I'll be nice and talk to my brothers. Ugh, Are so you going to grab my sleeve? Hey, bro. Hey. Man, everyone's on edge. Of course they are. Sector three. Hey, Why would anyone do something like that? Where does it pass If you're about out? to unburden yourself, God. don't. Yeesh. You don't make it easy. They even Stop have hotels right down now. there. Are you the one who I just want to talk about my feelings. <laughs> mm. Hey, got a sec? My daughter now lives in Sector 8. So. You're, uh, holding up pretty well, huh? Oh, you'll talk Even to Biggs about feelings. All over <laughs> See how it is. Wow. Yet. My hands are still shaking. You get used to it. Something to look forward to. Or maybe not. You see, my daughter now lives in Sector 8, so... Got my eye on you, lady. Why don't you learn to take a hint, buddy? Lady who's labeled as question marks for name. <laughs> Also, I like that the trains have little TVs in them. Mm-hmm. So I can watch the news in the train. I want stamp cartoons. Mm-hmm. Little help, Cloud. This will be the Please. Last attack on a reactor. I can't stop thinking about it. The bomb I made shouldn't have produced an explosion that big. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> the explosion triggered a reaction. With no one has ever considered keeping things to themselves in this guess. whole city. Shouldn't the reactor have fail safes to prevent that kind of thing? <laughs> Look, yeah, everyone's got so much on their minds, they're not hearing this conversation there, right? at all. Right. Oh, no. I'm just looking for excuses for something that was clearly my own fault. <sighs> Gotta own up to it if I'm gonna learn from this and move on. Okay, Thanks, sure, Todd. sure, you bombed yeah, the city and, and destroyed all our homes, but there's a pickpocket on the loose. <laughs> we gotta have our priorities. <laughs> What kind of maniacs would go so far as to bomb a reactor? I don't know, paralegal. Uh, they've yet to announce it publicly, but I heard it was Avalanche's doing. Really? Aren't they the terrorists who tried to kill the president? I love that this they man's name is just Shinra do. Middle Manager. Hey, quit talking <laughs> out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows Avalanche only cares about saving the planet. Would you like to hear about saving the planet? I have a speech prepared. J just who do you think you are? A law-abiding concerned citizen. Law-abiding? Really? <laughs> uh, uh, shh. I'm antagonize him. In my humble opinion, that explosion was a message. A message to the bastards bleeding our planet dry. Think they got it? Heard it loud and clear, y'all's masters. <laughs> we will not submit to intimidation or violence, but work together for peace and prosperity. Oh, you mean music. That is how civilized people change the world. I wholly believe the answer is somewhere in the middle. <laughs> that is the Shinra Creed. <laughs> <laughs> y'all want a Buford? <laughs> It's fighting words. <laughs> it's what we believe. We all have to follow our conscience, don't we? <sighs> we should go. Right. <laughs> I love the interaction with those fucking Shinra employees. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when Wedge is your uh, media strategist for Avalanche. <laughs> the am I right? You hear that suit? Shinra creed my ass. We're the good guys, damn it. Uh, I didn't hear anything. You gotta believe me. They'd probably kill us if they knew we were the ones responsible. No, don't think about it. Well, I get it if you can't relate. Shower might help. The long, hot one. I get it if you don't shower. <laughs> How much longer so this, this is a uh, recurring thing with, with Biggs. He, he loves showers. <laughs> he loves being clean. <laughs> huh. 
let's get this out of the way. Personally, I find visual aids make the dull stuff a lot more bearable. If it helps, think of it as an initiation rite. How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm not... <clears throat> There's such a thing as playing too hard to get. So, you set the bomb. We've got a wireframe model of the great <laughs> city of Midgar, complete with massive steel plates suspended 300 meters above ground level. You can just plug into the train TV and put up whatever you want. Hell yeah, you can. By the Mako reactors, which feed the insatiable appetites of the public. The train will be passing through an ID checkpoint shortly. This here is the train's route. As you can see, it'll take us around this main pillar. Look, we're about halfway through it now. They've set up a checkpoint here to scan the IDs of all passengers heading in and out. Date of birth, residential status, criminal history. Wait, why are you putting the camera on that guy for criminal history? He's just sleeping. Wait a minute. Public security wouldn't have it any other way. Heads up. <sighs> Don't worry. Our IDs are impeccable. Oh no, did you see the extras at the end of the last video? Cloud's not good at lasers. <laughs> Won't be long till we reach the bottom. Relax. Take a good look. It's because of that great big pizza in the sky that people down there gotta struggle to survive. Shinra sucks up Mako. While the soil turns to dust, the air fills with smog and the flowers die. Then leave and don't look back. <sighs> that's what's always worked for me. <sighs> well, that's all well and good. If you only out for yourself. But the folks down there don't have the luxury of choice, you know? I can't believe Cloud just said if you're worried about uh, sea levels rising, sell your house. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna buy the house, Cloud? <laughs> like this train, I suppose. There's only one way it can go. Yeah, we have one extra here, and that is just the, the alternate dialogue uh, when you're talking to the, the flower lady. Um, if you tell her you don't want the flower. I'm good. I'm very good. I'm good. Oh, don't be like that. I know you want one. When was the last time you saw a real flower, huh? Plus, it'll make your girlfriend's day. I guarantee it. Are you trying to say you have, like, a stranglehold on the flower much. market? <laughs> Are you well, a flower monopolist? on the customer. In your case... <laughs> it's on the house. And if you say final take it, it'll just loops back into what we saw earlier, but, uh... Don't be stupid. Enough already. I'll give you two gil for it. Two measly gil? For a real flower? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Five, then. Please, that's not nearly enough. Besides, I clearly said it was on the... <sighs> Grumpy. You're trying to get rid of me for five lousy gil. <laughs> Sorry, but your plan won't work. Huh? Lovers used to get... Look, nobody has bought these flowers ready. today, and I need some type of walking billboard. <laughs> Wow, where'd you get those flowers from? Oh, go to Loveless Street. That's all I want, please. All I really want is for my flowers to be associated with cop murder. 